I am your hearties. You can blame that terrible accent on Stonemeyer Games, who is gracious enough to send us a copy of Libertalia, Winds of Galecrest, for our honest review. I want to personally thank Rodney over at Watch It Played for his excellent instructional video on how to play. I'll link it down below. We played the two-player version, as well as adding Jamie to the mix for three-player action, and here are our thoughts. The game is very easy to set up, and all the components are of good quality. The box setup and management of components is also great. The tiles used in the game are especially satisfying when jumbling them around in the canvas bag that they provide. Just listen to that clickety-clack. We had some issues initially remembering turn order items such as nighttime and end of voyage activities, but we got that all sorted out. A player aid might not be the worst thing considering that is the only thing that is really missing from this game and might be helpful in initial playthroughs. The board is two-sided for calm and rough weather play, and you also have a stack of two-sided replacement conditions that you can randomly distribute to increase replayability and amp up the difficulty even further. While we didn't use any of these or the stormy side of the board, we can see how both of those components could really screw with players and make the game even that much more devious. Yes, I said devious, as in that is what this game is in a nutshell. You and your crew jockey for position on the board in both reputation and loot, with card conditions wreaking even more havoc. Get a saber for loot? Boot someone else off the island so they can't collect any. Leave someone a relic as their only reward and make sure that they lose doubloons. The initial mechanic of having matching crews in each hand worried me. But as folks played and the rounds continued, those hands became quite varied. If you're not paying attention to who is playing what, you could be in for an unexpected visitor on your high seas adventure plundering your best intentions with an unaccounted for ability. Doubloons is the name of the game and these handy counters are perfect. Shaped like a treasure chest and buried away in between rounds, what you collect at the end of each voyage is squirreled away to be counted at the end of the game. There are three voyages per game with each voyage lasting four to six days, so there's plenty of opportunity to plunder some booty and make a name for yourself as a freebooter with the most looter. Uh, anyway, uh, did I mention there's a solo version of the game? I didn't try it myself, but if your seas are lacking pirates, go on a solo run using the included materials. Our games ran about 30 minutes for both two and three player versions, and setting up for another playthrough was a snap. Easy to play, after we conquered the turn order and conditions, easy setup and quality components make this game a voyage I'd happily take again with up to five other pirates. Check out the description below for links to the game, and as always, like and subscribe if you enjoy our content. Arr.